Do you remember budget CPUs? Yeah, well, most people don't. In 2025, with AI, advanced ray tracing technologies, it feels like everyone's forgotten about the budget CPUs. These are humble, wallet-friendly processors, but we didn't forget, at least not for today. If you are buying a new affordable CPU in 2025, then you are in the right place, because I will be ranking the best and worst budget CPUs that you can buy right now. And before starting, I want to say that getting the best budget CPU is only half the battle, because there's one other crucial component that needs to be perfectly paired with the CPU in order to get the best productivity and gaming performance, and that is the graphics card. Now, if you get this component wrong, even the best CPU out there will not give you ideal performance and it will be a bottleneck, so you will not be achieving the performance that you are seeking. That's why I will talk about this component in just a second. And by the way, you will find the links to the best budget CPU deals that I will be mentioning today down below in the video description box with the latest prices and availability in your region. My name is Valentino, that being said, let's start. We'll start by talking about the i3 12100F and you will see the price for each CPU as well by the time of filming alongside each CPU. Now, the i3 12100F is going into the doesn't make sense category because as of right now, if you are upgrading your CPU or building a new PC, the i3 12100F for 80 bucks is not a great deal. Now, the CPU itself is actually quite decent and you can pair it with very nice budget graphics cards, but for 80 bucks, it's just not worth it because for $10 more, you can get the i3 14100F. That's why, in my opinion, it doesn't make sense to buy a 12100F as of right now or the 13100F, which is $90 as well. So you might as well go with the 14100F for the same price and get slightly faster gaming performance. The 14100F, on the other hand, is going into the great value category because in my opinion, it's actually very nice value if you're looking for the cheapest CPU out there that will be very decent to pair with some budget graphics card and achieve smooth performance at 1080p resolution or even some 1440p depending on the graphics card. You can pair the 14100F with GPUs up to the RTX 5060 or RX 9060 XT, which are very decent for 1080p high FPS gaming or some 1440p once again, depending on the game and depending on the settings. And in terms of esports shooters like Fortnite or Valorant, you can expect very decent frame rates at 200 plus FPS on average competitive settings, depending on the esports game. In some esports shooters, you can expect even more than 300 FPS, so feel free to go with a 240 or a 144 Hz 1080p or even 1440p monitor. Now, let's get into some AMD CPUs, and here we have the Ryzen 5 3600, which it doesn't make sense as of right now. Once again, this is a guide for people who want to buy a new CPU in 2025 to either upgrade their PC or build a new complete system. So if you already have a Ryzen 5 3600, it might be amazing, especially if you have the right CPU and depending on the games that you play. But if you are trying to buy a brand new CPU, the Ryzen 5 3600 doesn't make any sense because it's going for $77 and just for $15 more, you can get the i3 14100F, which in my opinion is going to be a much better purchase in terms of gaming performance. And the same goes for the Ryzen 5 5500. In my opinion, it does not make any sense for the same reason. This CPU is going for $75 and once again, for $15 bucks more, you can go with the i3 14100F. However, if you have a little bit more money to spend, you can get the Ryzen 5 5600. And this is the first CPU going into the only good for some people category. And let me explain. If you are building a PC from scratch, I wouldn't recommend you buying this CPU and I would recommend you buying a different one, which I will be talking about in just a second. But if you are already on the same AMD platform, the AM4 platform, let's say you have a Ryzen 5 3600 or you have a Ryzen 5 5500, then upgrading to the Ryzen 5 5600 might make sense depending on your graphics card and the games that you are playing and of course the FPS numbers that you are trying to achieve. So if you are already on the AM4 platform and you are definitely not looking to spend more than 120 bucks, then yes, the Ryzen 5 5600 will make sense. But for most people, if you are not on the AM4 platform or if you are building a PC from scratch, I just would recommend you buying a different CPU. So getting back to Intel, here we have the i5 lineup. We have the i5 12400F, we have the 13400F and we have the 14400F. Now the 12400F doesn't make sense. It's the same price as the 13400F. So let's just eliminate the 12400F if you're trying to buy a new CPU in 2025 that's affordable. Now the 13400F goes for the same price of 115 USD. And if you're looking to build a new budget PC, I feel like this is one of the best options that you have out there. The i5 13400F is a six core CPU that's actually quite decent and you can pair it with very nice graphics cards like the 5060 Ti or RX 9060 XT 16GB version. So yes, the 13400F in my opinion is great value and it's going to be a much better decision than the Ryzen 5 5600 if you are building a new PC. You also have some upgradeability options down the line. Let's say you want to upgrade to a more high-end CPU like the i7 14700K or even i9 14900K even though I feel like the i7 is going to be way more than enough for most people. So you have some upgradeability in the future in case you want to also upgrade your graphics card and you will need a more capable CPU. Also, the 13400F is very fast when it comes to esports games at 1080p, so feel free to go with a 240 or 360Hz monitor in case you want to compete in these type of games. And most importantly, it will not bottle 
bottleneck most mid-range graphics cards. Now, if you have a bit of extra money to spend, you can get the 14400F, which is going to be just barely faster, but it's only $20 more expensive. So if you feel like $20 more is not a lot, by all means, go with the 14400F. But just keep in mind that it's very, very, very similar to the 13400F. Then going back to AMD, we have the Ryzen 7 5700X. And this is going into the only good for some people category once again, because if you're building a new PC, it just doesn't make sense to go with the 5700X because it's basically going to be very similar to the i5 13400F or 14400F and it's more expensive. So I wouldn't recommend you buying this CPU if you're building a brand new system, but if you are already on the M4 platform and you have a CPU like the Ryzen 5 3600 or 5500 and you want to upgrade to a more decent CPU that's going to be better for gaming right now and is also going to support higher end graphics cards, then yes, the 5700X might make a lot of sense for you. But again, if you're building a PC from scratch, do not buy this CPU because the price is going for 157 bucks, which is more expensive than Intel and it's just not going to give you that many advantages. And then the only CPU that I'm going to put in the best tier is going to be the Ryzen 5 7600X. Now, this also applies to the Ryzen 5 7600 or even Ryzen 5 9600X, depending on the price by the time of watching. Sometimes the 9600X has a better price depending on the discount. Sometimes the Ryzen 5 7600 is better in terms of price and performance. So just get one of those three CPUs depending on which one is the cheapest by the time of filming. Now, the Ryzen 5 7600X as of right now is the cheapest and it's going for 170 bucks. Yes, it's the most expensive CPU I've mentioned so far in this video, but do keep in mind that this is from the AM5 platform and if you are building a new PC, this CPU is going to be much better overall. Not only because in terms of gaming performance it's better, but it also supports higher end graphics cards. So you can pair it with new gen GPUs like the RTX 5070 or even 5070 Ti or RX 9070 or 9070 XT. So it will be better for more graphics cards without bottlenecking them. It also, once again, provides better performance. And on top of that, it's from the AM5 platform. So you get much more upgradeability down the line. You get DDR5 memory support. And let's say down the line, you want to upgrade up to the fastest CPU in the market in the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, you will be able to do so without having to upgrade the motherboard and the RAM. So in my opinion, this is going to be the best purchase that you can make if you are searching for an affordable CPU, but it's the most expensive CPUs in this range. So of course, if you can't go up to the Ryzen 5 7600X, consider any other CPU I mentioned today. But if you can afford the extra, I feel like this CPU is going to be the best CPU that you can buy in this price range. Down below, you will find this CPU and also the 7600 and 9600X for you to check the latest prices and availability in your region. And please remember that the graphics card is very important. So if you don't know yet if the CPU is going to be compatible with your graphics card, I highly recommend you watching my video on the best budget gaming PCs that you can buy right now in 2025 for you to get the best CPU and graphics card combo. That way you have no bottlenecks and you achieve the best performance that you can get for the price that you are paying. You will find that video in the top right corner of the screen. And once again, that's the most important thing in my opinion is getting the right CPU and GPU combo. Because I want to clarify that even if you get the best CPU here in the Ryzen 5 7600X, if you have a graphics card like the RTX 5090, you are going to be bottlenecking that GPU. And also if you have a very low end GPU, I believe you can get a lower end CPU and a higher end graphics card for you to achieve better performance overall. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.